Alexandru Macedonski, Wikipedia article audio. Alexandru Macedonski, also rendered as L. A. Macedonski, Macedonski or Macedonski, March 14, 1854, November 24, 1920, was a Wallachian, later Romanian poet, novelist, dramatist, and literary critic known especially for having promoted French symbolism in his native country, and for leading the Romanian symbolist movement during its early decades. A forerunner of local modernist literature, he is the first local author to have used free verse, and claimed by some to have been the first in modern European literature. Within the framework of Romanian literature, Macedonski is seen by critics as second only to national poet Mihai Emanescu, as leader of a cosmopolitan and aestheticist trend formed around his literatural journal, he was diametrically opposed to the inward-looking traditionalism of Emanescu and his school. Debuting as a neo-romantic in the Wallachian tradition, Macedonski went through the realist, naturalist stage deemed social poetry, while progressively adapting his style to symbolism and Parnassianism, and repeatedly but unsuccessfully attempting to impose himself in the Francophone world. Despite having theorized instrumentalism, which reacted against the traditional guidelines of poetry, he maintained a lifelong connection with neoclassicism and its ideal of purity. Macedonski's quest for excellence found its foremost expression in his recurring motif of life as a pilgrimage to Mecca, notably used in his critically acclaimed Night's Cycle. The stylistic stages of his career are reflected in the collections Prima Verba, Posei, and Excelsior, as well as in the fantasy novel Thalassa, L.E. Calvaire de Fou. In old age, he became the author of Rondel's noted for their detached and serene vision of life, in contrast with his earlier combativeness. Biography Early Life and Family In parallel to his literary career, Macedonski was a civil servant, notably serving as prefect in the Budjak and northern Dobruja during the late 1870s. As journalist and militant, his allegiance fluctuated between the liberal current and conservatism, becoming involved in polemics and controversies of the day. Of the long series of publications he founded, Literatoral was the most influential, notably hosting his early conflicts with the Junimia Literary Society. These targeted Vasila Alexandri and especially Emanescu, their context and tone becoming the cause of a major rift between Macedonski and his public. This situation repeated itself in later years, when Macedonski and his four, a moral a magazine began campaigning against the Junimist dramatist Ion Luca Caragel, whom they falsely accused of plagiarism. During World War I, the poet aggravated his critics by supporting the Central Powers against Romania's alliance with the Entente side. His biography was also marked by an enduring interest in esotericism, numerous attempts to become recognized as an inventor, and an enthusiasm for cycling. The scion of a political and aristocratic family, the poet was the son of General Alexandru Macedonski who served as defense minister, and the grandson of 1821 rebel Dmitri Macedonski. Both his son Alexis and grandson Sor were known painters. The poet's paternal family had arrived in Wallachia during the early 19th century. Of South Slav or a Romanian origin, they claimed to have descended from Serb insurgents in Ottoman-ruled Macedonia. Alexandru's grandfather Dimitri and Dimitri's brother Pavel participated in the 1821 uprising against the Fanariot administration, and in alliance with the Philoki Eteria, Dimitri made the object of controversy when, during the final stage of the revolt, 
he sided with the Atiria in its confrontation with Wallachian leader Tudor Vladimirescu, taking an active part in the latter's killing. Both Macedonsky brothers had careers in the Wallachian military forces, at a time when the country was governed by Imperial Russian envoys, when the regulamental organic regime recognized the family as belonging to Wallachia's nobility. Dimitri married Zoe, the daughter an ethnic Russian or Polish officer, their son, the Russian-educated Alexandru, climbed in the military and political hierarchy, joining the unified land forces after his political ally, Alexander John Cusa, was elected dominator and the two Danubian principalities became united Romania. Both the officers uncle Pavel and brother Mihail were amateur poets. Macedonsky's mother, Maria Fison, a, was from an aristocratic environment, being the scion of Oltenian boyars. Through her father, she may have descended from Russian immigrants who had been absorbed into Oltenia's nobility. Maria had been adopted by the boyar Dumitrish Paranu, and the couple had inherited the Adonkata and Pomet, T.I. estates in Goy, T.I., on the Amaradia Valley. Both the poet and his father were dissatisfied with accounts of their lineage, contradicting them with an account that researchers have come to consider spurious. Although adherents of the Romanian Orthodox Church, the Macedonskis traced their origin to Rogala bearing Lithuanian nobility from the defunct Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. While the writer perpetuated his father's claim, it is possible that he also took pride in investigating his Balkan roots, according to literary historian Tudor Vianu, who, as a youth, was a member of his circle. This tendency is attested by two of Macedonsky's poems from the 1880s, where the South Slavs appear as icons of freedom. Vianu's contemporary, literary historian George Kalinesko, postulated that, although the family had been absorbed into the ethnic and cultural majority, the poet's origin served to enrich local culture by linking it to a Thracian tradition and the spirit of adventurers. Debut Years The family moved often, following General Macedonsky's postings. Born in Bucharest, Macedonsky's son was the third of four siblings, the oldest of whom was a daughter, Katerina. Before the age of six, he was a sickly and nervous child, who is reported to have had regular tantrums. In 1862, his father sent him to school in Oltenia, and he spent most time in the Amaradia region. The nostalgia he felt for the landscape later made him consider writing an Amarazine cycle, of which only one poem was ever completed. He was attending the Karolai High School in Krajava and, according to his official record, graduated in 1867. Macedonsky's father had by then become known as an authoritarian commander, and, during his time in Targuakna, faced a mutiny which only his wife could stop by pleading with the soldiers. A stern parent, he took an active part in educating his children. Having briefly served as defense minister, the general was mysteriously dismissed by Cusa in 1863 and his pension became the topic of a political scandal. It ended only under the rule of Carol I, Cusa's Hohenzollern successor, when Parliament voted against increasing the sum to the level demanded by its recipient. Having preserved a negative impression of the 1866 plebiscite, during which Cusa's dethronement had been confirmed, Macedonsky remained a committed opponent of the new ruler. As a youth and adult, he sought to revive his father's cause, and included allusions to the perceived injustice in at least one poem. After spending the last months of his life protesting against the authorities, 
Macedonsky father fell ill and died in September 1869, leaving his family to speculate that he had been murdered by political rivals. 1875 Trial and Office as Prefect Macedonsky left Romania in 1870, traveling through Austria-Hungary and spending time in Vienna, before visiting Switzerland and possibly other countries, according to one account, it was here that he may have first met his rival poet Mihai Emanescu, at a time a Viennese student. Macedonsky's visit was meant to be preparation for entering the University of Bucharest, but he spent much of his time in the bohemian environment, seeking entertainment and engaging in romantic escapades. He was however opposed to the lifestyle choices of people his age, claiming that they were engaged in orgy after orgy. At around that date, the young author had begun to perfect a style heavily influenced by Romanticism, and in particular by his Wallachian predecessors Dimitri Balintinianu and Ion Heliad Radulscu. He was for a while in Styria, at Bad Gleichenberg, a stay which, George Kalinescu believes, may have been the result of a medical recommendation to help him counter excessive nervousness. The landscape there inspired him to write an ode. Also in 1870, he published his first lyrics in George Bari's Transylvanian-based journal Telegraphul Roman. The following year, he left for Italy, where he visited Pisa, Florence, Venice and possibly other cities. His records of the journey indicate that he was faced with financial difficulties and plagued by disease. Macedonsky also claimed to have attended college lectures in these cities, and to have spent significant time studying at Pisa University, but this remains uncertain. He eventually returned to Bucharest, where he entered the Faculty of Letters. According to Kalinescu, Macedonsky did not feel the need to attend classes, because such a young man will expect society to render upon him its homages. He was again in Italy during spring 1872, soon after publishing his debut volume Prima Verba. Having also written an anti-carol piece, published in Telegraphul Roman during 1873, Macedonsky reportedly feared political reprisals, and decided to make another visit to Styria and Italy while his case was being assessed. It was in Italy that he met French musicologist Jules Combariou, with whom he corresponded sporadically over the following decades. During that period, Macedonsky became interested in the political scene and political journalism, first as a sympathizer of the liberal radical current which, in 1875, organized itself around the National Liberal Party. In 1874, back in Krajava, Macedonsky founded a short-lived literary society known as Junimia, a title which purposefully or unwittingly copied that of the influential conservative association with whom he would later quarrel. It was then that he met journalist and pedagogue, Tefan Vilescu, a meeting witnessed by Vilescu's pupil, the future liberal journalist Konstantin Bakalba, a, who recorded it in his memoirs. Old Toll magazine, which he had helped establish and which displayed a liberal agenda, continued to be published until July 1875, and featured Macedonsky's translations from Pierre-Jean de Berenger, Hector de Charlou and Alphonse de Lamartine, as well as his debut in travel writing and short story. At age 22, he worked on his first play, a comedy titled Gemini I. In 1874 that he came to the attention of young journalist future dramatist Ion Luca Carigel, who satirized him in articles for the magazine Gimple, ridiculing his claim to Lithuanian descent, 
and eventually turning him into the character Omsky, whose fictional career ends with his death from exhaustion caused by contributing to for the country's political development. This was the first episode in a consuming polemic between the two figures. Reflecting back on this period in 1892, Macedonsky described Karajal as a noisy young man of sophistic reasoning, whose target audience was to be found in beer gardens. Early Literatural Years In March 1875, Macedonsky was arrested on charges of defamation or sedition. For almost a year before, he and Oltul had taken an active part in the campaign against Conservative Party and its leader, Premier Lasker Katargiu. In this context, he had demanded that the common man rise up with weapons in their hands and break both the government agents and the government, following up with similar messages aimed at the dominator. He was taken to Bucharest's Vacare, T.I. prison and confined there for almost three months. Supported by the liberal press and defended by the most prestigious pro-liberal attorneys, Macedonsky faced a jury trial on June 7, being eventually cleared of the charges. Reportedly, the Bucharest populace organized a spontaneous celebration of the verdict. Against Alexandri and Amanesco In 1875, after the national liberal Ion Emmanuel Florisco was assigned the post of premier by Carol, Macedonsky embarked on an administrative career. The poet was upset by not being included on the national liberal list for the 1875 suffrage. This disenchantment led him into a brief conflict with the young liberal figure Bonifacio Florisco, only to join him soon afterward in editing Standardel Journal, alongside Pantazigica and George Falcoyanu. The publication followed the line of Nikolai Marit Blairemerg, made notorious for his radical and republican agenda. Gika and Macedonsky remained close friends until Gika's 1882 death. First Paris Sojourn and Posia A. Idarilui The new cabinet eventually appointed him prefect of Balgrad region, in the Budjak. In parallel, he published his first translation, a version of Parisina an 1816 epic poem by Lord Byron, and completed the original works Ithilo and Kalil Arabului. He also spoke at the Romanian Athenaeum, presenting his views on the state of Romanian literature. His time in office ended upon the outbreak of the Russo-Turkish War. At the time, Russian volunteers were amassed on the Budjak border, requesting from the Romanian authorities the right of free passage into the Principality of Serbia. The national liberal premier Ion Brașinu, who was negotiating an anti-Ottoman alliance, sent Macedonsky signals to let them pass, but the prefect, obeying the official recommendation of Internal Affairs Minister George D. Vernisco, decided against it, and was consequently stripped of his office. Still determined to pursue a career in the press, Macedonsky founded a string of unsuccessful magazines with patriotic content and titles such as Vesti, Dunaria, Fulgeril and, after 1880, Tarara. Their history is connected with that of the Russo-Turkish War, at the end of which Romanian participation on the Russian side resulted in her independence. Macedonsky remained committed to the anti-Ottoman cause, and, some thirty years later, stated, We want no Turkey in Europe. Late 1890s By 1879, the poet, who continued to voice criticism of Carol, had several times switched sides between the national liberals and the opposition conservatives. That year, 
while the Budjak was ceded to Russia and northern Dobruja was integrated into Romania, the Brasheno cabinet appointed him administrator of the Sulana Plaza and the Danube Delta. He had previously refused to be made controller in Putna County, believing such an appointment to be beneath his capacity, and had lost a national liberal appointment in Silistra when southern Dobruja was granted to the Principality of Bulgaria. During this short interval in office, he travelled to the Snake Island in the Black Sea. His appreciation for the place later motivated him to write the fantasy novel Thalassa, L.E. Calvair de Foot and the poem Lucky. With the 1880s came a turning point in Alexandru Macedonsky's career. Vianu notes that changes took place in the poet's relationship with his public, society recognizes in him the nonconformist. The man becomes singular, people start talking about his oddities. Macedonsky's presumed frustration at being perceived in this way, Vianu notes, may have led him closer to the idea of poet Maudet, theorized earlier by Paul Verlaine. In this context, he had set his sight on promoting social poetry, the merger between lyricism and political militantism. Meanwhile, according to Kalinescu, his attacks on the liberals and the daft insults he aimed at throne had effectively ruined his own chance of political advancement. In January 1880, he launched his most influential and long-lived publication, Literatural, which was also the focal point of his eclectic cultural circle, and, in later years, of the local symbolist school. In its first version, the magazine was co-edited by Macedonsky, Bonifacio Florescu, and poet T. H. M. Stoenescu. Florescu parted with the group soon after, due to a disagreement with Macedonsky, and was later attacked by the latter for allegedly accumulating academic posts. Literatural aimed to irritate Juni missed sensibilities from its first issue, when it stated its dislike for political prejudice in literature. This was most likely an allusion to the views of Juni missed figure Tichu Moresco, being later accompanied by explicit attacks on him and his followers. An early success for the new journal was the warm reception it received from Vasila Alexandri, a romantic poet and occasional Juni mist whom Macedonsky idolized at the time, and the collaboration of popular memoirist George Zion. Another such figure was the intellectual V. A. Eurekia, whom Macedonsky made president of the Literatural Society. In 1881, Education Minister Eurekia granted Macedonsky the Baini Marenti Medal First Class, although, Kalinescu stresses, the poet had only totaled 18 months of public service. At around that time, Macedonsky had allegedly begun courting actress Aristis Romanescu, who rejected his advances, leaving him unenthusiastic about love matters and unwilling to seek female company. In parallel, Macedonsky used the magazine to publicize his disagreement with the main Juni Mist voice, Convorberi Light Rare. Among the group of contributors, several had already been victims of Moresco's irony, Zion, Eurekia, Pantazigica, and Petru Grati, Tinu. While welcoming the debut of its contributor, Parnassian, Neoclassicist novelist and poet Delia Zamfirescu, Macedonsky repeatedly attacked its main exponent, the conservative poet Emanescu, claiming not to understand his poetry. However, Literatoral was also open to contributions from some Convorberi Light Rare affiliates. In November 1880, Macedonsky's plays Yad. and Uncia, Ul Sarasi premiered at the National Theatre Bucharest. A sign of government approval, this was followed by Macedonsky's appointment to a minor administrative office, as historical monuments inspector. 
Nevertheless, both plays failed to impose themselves on public perception, and were withdrawn from the program by 1888. Kalinescu asserts that, although Macedonsky later claimed to have always been facing poverty, his job in the administration, coupled with other sources of revenue, ensured him a comfortable existence. Kayan Scandal and Expatriation In 1881, Macedonsky published a new collection of poetry. Titled Posei, it carries the year 1882 on its original cover. Again moving away from liberalism, Macedonsky sought to make himself accepted by Junimia and Moresco. He consequently attended the Junimia sessions, and gave a public reading of Noaptia de Noimbri, the first publicized piece in his lifelong night's cycle. It reportedly earned him the praise of historian and poet Bogdan Petriciacu Hastu, who, although an anti Junimist, happened to be in the audience. Despite rumors according to which he had applauded Macedonsky, Moresco himself was not impressed, and left an unenthusiastic account of the event in his private diary. Return in World War I Years Macedonsky's open conflict with Junimia began in 1882, when he engaged in a publicized polemic with Alexandri. It was ignited when, through Macedonsky's articles, Literatural criticized Alexandri for accepting Romanian Academy Prizes despite being its member, and later involved Zion. Macedonsky also took distance from Alexandri's style, publishing a critical analysis of his poetry in one issue of Literatural. In turn, Alexandri humiliated his young rival by portraying him as Zoilus, the prototype of slanderers, and himself as the model poet Horace in the 1883 play Fantana Blanduzi. The two were eventually reconciled, and Macedonsky again spoke of Alexandri as his ideological and stylistic predecessor. In April 1882, Amanescu had also replied to Macedonsky in Timpul Journal, referring to an unnamed poet who barely finishes high school comes over to Bucharest selling knick-knacks and make-up literary dealership. Reproaching Macedonsky's attacks on Alexandri, Amanescu makes a nationalist comment about the young poet bearing the bastard instincts of those foreigners who were Romanianized only yesterday, and attributes him the physiognomy of a hairdresser. Through the articles of Petru Th. Messier Convorbari Lightrare gave Posei a negative review, deemed malevolent by literary historian Mircea Anghilescu. At the other end of the political and cultural spectrum, Macedonsky faced opposition from the intellectuals attracted to socialism, in particular contemporaneal editors Constantin Mill and Ioan Nadejde, with whom he was engaged in an extended polemic. In the meantime, Macedonsky published his own play, which had Cusa for its main character and was eponymously titled Cusa Voda, and completed translations for literatural from Maurice Rolinat, whom he helped impose as a main cultural reference in Romanian symbolism, and from the Greek poet Achilles Paraskos. In 1883, he also contributed his first sketch story, Casa Cunr 10. In early 1883, he married Anna Ralit Slatanianu. Wealthy and supposedly related to Romanian aristocrats, she would bear him five children in all, the painter Alexis was the eldest, followed by Nikita, the three youngest were two sons and a daughter, Anna. His heterosexual lifestyle notwithstanding, Macedonsky remained a self-avowed admirer of male beauties, and was rumored to be a closeted homosexual. In July 1883, 
Macedonsky undertook one of his most controversial anti-Junimist actions. That month, Literatorial published an epigram signed with the pseudonym Duna, deriding an unnamed author who had lost his mind. Mihai Emanescu whom many had already come to see as Romania's national poet had by then developed a mental disorder which had become known to the general public. Ever since that moment, Macedonsky has generally been believed to be Duna, and as a result, was faced with much criticism from both readers and commentators. The intense anti-literatorial press campaign was initiated in August, when writer Grigory Ventura issued an article condemning Macedonsky's attitude, with Macedonsky responding in the national liberal organ Romano. During one evening, Macedonsky is reported to have been assaulted by anonymous supporters of Emanescu. His previous conflict with Nadejde was also affected by this renewed controversy, while opposed to Juni Mist policies, the socialists at Contemporanal voiced their admiration for Emanescu's art. Late Polemics, Illness and Death Work General Characteristics Prima Verba and Other Early Works Late in 1883, Macedonsky and his friends unveiled Ion Georgescu's statue of their mentor Balintinianu in the National Theatre lobby. The circumstances in which this took place rose suspicion of foul play, on this grounds, Macedonsky was ridiculed by his former friend Zamfirescu in the journal Romania Libera, which left him embittered. Kalinescu proposes that, although such negative reactions were invoked by Macedonsky's supporters as a sign of their mentor having been marginalized, Macedonsky had expressed his dissatisfaction with the cultural environment long before that moment, and was still a respected figure even after the incidents took place. Having been stripped of his administrative office by the new Brescianu cabinet, Macedonsky faced financial difficulties, and was forced to move into a house on the outskirts of Bucharest, and later moved between houses in northern Bucharest. According to Kalinescu, the poet continued to cultivate luxury and passionately invested in the decorative arts, although his source of income, other than the supposed assistance of ruling houses, remains a mystery. Arguing that Macedonsky was always in need of money to use on his luxury items, poet Victor F. Demille claimed, he did not shy away from sending emphatic notes to the potentates of his day, flattering some, threatening others. He would marry off or simply mate some of his disciples with aging and rich women, and then he would squeeze out their assets. Macedonsky eventually left Romania in 1884, visiting Paris. On his way there, he passed through Craiova, where he met aspiring author Traian Dimitrescu, whose works he had already hosted in Literatorial and who was to become his friend and protege. Dimitrescu later recalled being gripped by tremors of emotion upon first catching sight of Macedonsky. In France, Macedonsky set up contacts within the French literary environment, and began contributing to French or Francophone literary publications including the Belgian symbolist platforms La Wallonie and LLA Littéraire. His collaboration with La Wallonie alongside Albert Mockel, Tudor Vianua believes, makes Alexandru Macedonsky one in the original wave of European symbolists. This adaptation to symbolism also drew on his marked Francophilia, which in turn complemented his tendencies toward cosmopolitanism. He became opposed to Carol I, who, in 1881, had been granted the crown of the Romanian kingdom. In addition to his admiration for Cusa and the 1848 Wallachian revolutionaries, the poet objected to the king's sympathy for France's main rival, the German Empire. 
In January 1885, after having returned from the voyage, he announced his retirement from public life, claiming that German influence and its exponents at Junimia had conquered Romanian culture, and repeating his claim that Emanesco lacked value. In the meantime, Literatural went out of print, although new series were still published at irregular intervals until 1904. The magazine was reportedly hated by the public, causing Macedonski, Stoenisko, Florisko, Eurekia and educator Engel Dimitriescu to try to revive it as Revista Light Rara. The poet attempted to establish other magazines, all of them short-lived, and, in 1887, handed for print his naturalist novella drama Bonala while completing one of the most revered episodes in the Knights series, Noaptia de Mai. Also in 1886, he worked on his other naturalist novellas, Zida August, P. E. Drum de Po, T. A. Dincarnatol Anui Deserter, Intercoat. E and the eponymous Nick Udiranu. By 1888, he was again sympathetic toward Blair Emerg, whose dissident national liberal faction had formed an alliance with the conservatives, editing Stendardol, RA as his supporting journal. However, late in the same year, he returned to the liberal mainstream, being assigned a weekly column in Romanol newspaper. Two years later, he attempted to relaunch Literatural under the leadership of liberal figure Bogdan Petricea Kohastu, but the latter eventually settled for founding his own Revistinwa. Around 1891, he saluted Junimia's own break with the Conservatives and its entry into politics at the Conservative Constitutional Party before offering an enthusiastic welcome to the 1892 Junimist agitation among university students. In 1894, he would speak in front of student crowds gathered at a political rally in University Square, and soon after made himself known for supporting the cause of ethnic Romanians and other underrepresented groups of Austria-Hungary. His literary thesis of the time was titled Posia a Iderului. It upheld symbolist authors as the models to follow, while Macedonski personally began producing what he referred to as instrumentalist poems, composed around musical and onomatopoeic elements, and showing a preference for internal rhymes. Such an experimental approach was soon after parroted and ridiculed by Ion Luca Caragel who had by then affiliated and parted with Junimia, in his new Muftol Roman magazine. The poet sought to reconcile with his rival, publicizing a claim that Caragel was being unjustly ignored by the cultural establishment, but this attempt failed to mend relations between them, and the conflict escalated further. While, in 1893, Literatural hosted fragments of Thalassa in its Romanian language version, the author also launched a daily, Lumina. It was also at that stage that Alexandru Macedonski associated with Cincinnat Pavlesko, the noted epigram Marian, who joined him in editing Literatural, and with whom he co authored the 1893 verse tragedy depicting the biblical hero Saul and named after him. Although showcased by the National Theatre with star actor Constantin Natara in the title role, it failed to register success with the public. Two years later, the two literatural editors made headlines as pioneers of cycling. An enthusiastic promoter of the sport, Macedonski joined fellow poet Constantin Cantilli on a marathon, pedaling from Bucharest across the border into Austria-Hungary, all the way down to Bra, O.V. Realism and Naturalism Macedonski also returned with a new volume of poetry, Excelsior, and founded Liga Orthodoxa, 
a magazine noted for hosting the debut of Tudor Argazi, later one of the most celebrated figures in Romanian literature. Macedonski commended his new protégé for reaching the summit of poetry and art at an age when I was still prattling verses. Liga Ortodoxa also hosted articles against Karajal, which Macedonski signed with the pseudonym Salistiu. The magazine was additional proof of Macedonski's return to conservatism, and largely dedicated to defending the cause of Romanian Orthodox Metropolitan Gunadai, deposed by the Romanian Synod following a political scandal. It defended Gunadai up until he chose to resign, and subsequently went out of print. Macedonski was shocked to note that Gunadai had given up his own defense. In 1895, his Casa Cunr 10 was translated into French by the journal des Debats, whose editors reportedly found it picturesque. Two years later, Macedonski himself published French language translations of his earlier poetry under the title Bronzes, a volume prefaced by his disciple, the critic and promoter Alexandru Bogdan Pite, T.I. Although it was positively reviewed by Mercure de France magazine, Bronzes was largely unnoticed by the French audience, a fact which Tudor Vianu attributes to Bogdan Pite, T.I.'s lack of qualification for the cultural mission Macedonski had trusted him with. By that time, his circle had come to be frequented with regularity by Bogdan Pite, T.I.'s friend and collaborator the celebrated painter, Tefan Lulchin, who was in the symbolist and Art Nouveau stage of his career. By 1898, Macedonski was again facing financial difficulties, and his collaborators resorted to organizing a fundraiser in his honor. His rejection of the Orthodox establishment was documented by his political tract, published that year as Filamentol Clarului Orthodox. Between that time and 1900, he focused on researching esoteric, occult, and pseudoscientific subjects. Trajan Dimitrescu, who recorded his visits with Macedonski, recalled his former mentor being opposed to his positivist take on science, claiming to explain the workings of the universe in a different way through imagination, but also taking an interest in Camille Flammarion's astronomy studies. Macedonski was determined to interpret death through parapsychological means, and, in 1900, conferenced at the Athenaeum on the subject Suflatul, Ivaya, A. Idoer. The focal point of his vision was that man could voluntarily stave off death with words and gestures a concept he elaborated upon in his later articles. In one such piece, Macedonski argued, man has the power to compact the energy currents known as thoughts to the point where he changes them, according to his own will, into objects or soul-bearing creatures. He also attempted to build a machine for extinguishing chimney fires. Later, Nikita Macedonsky registered the invention of nacre-treated paper, which is sometimes attributed to his father. Adoption of Symbolism Excelsior Late Prose Works The few issues of Literatural that were printed in 1899-1900 saw the circle being joined by the young symbolist poet, Tefan Patika. In 1902, he published Cardia de Or, comprising his sketch stories and novellas. In parallel, Macedonski returned to the public scene, founding Four, a moral magazine. It was through this venue that he began responding to Ion Luca Caragel's earlier attacks. This he did by hosting the articles of aspiring journalist Constantin Al. Ionesc Kukayan, who accused Karajal of having plagiarized a Hungarian author by the name of Kemeny in his tragedy play Ne Pasta. Kemeny turned out to be non-existent. 
According to Vianu, Macedonsky had no prior knowledge of the fraud, but had also been blinded by his resentments instead of displaying discernment, and had even showed evidence of insanity. Most in Macedonsky's own series of anti-carriagel articles were unsigned, or signed with pseudonyms such as Lusiliu. Like in the case of Amanesco's conflict with Macedonsky, the polemic enlisted a negative response from the public. The poet's associate T. H. M. Stoenisko convinced himself that Caragel was being framed, and refused to allow Revista Light Rara to be used for endorsing Kayan, which caused Macedonsky to shun him. Macedonsky refused to withdraw his support for the cause even after Caragel sued Kayan, but for, a morala soon went out of print. Before it did so, the journal hosted some of Macedonsky's most renowned poems, including Lucky and Noaptia de Decembre, together with his article on Remy de Gourmet's thoughts on poetics. In his article of 1903, titled Spree Occultism, O Rinteri Ulterio R. Spree Teosophi, I Philosophi Sociala, the poet envisaged making his interest in esoteric subjects the basis of a new literary movement. Also that year, poet George Bacuvia began attending the literary circle, and gave a reading of his celebrated plum poem, being welcomed by Macedonsky with a flattering epigram. Macedonsky's series of short-lived periodicals resumed in 1905, when he founded Le Beau Danube Blue and Liga Conservador. He registered more success in 1906, when his Thalassa was published, as Le Calvaire de Fou, by Edward Sansot's Paris based publishing house. This followed intense self promotion within the French literary environment, as well as advertisements in the French press. Part of this involved Macedonsky sending his book to be reviewed by Emile Faguet, Jean Maunet Sully, José Finn Peladin, Pierre Quillard, and Jean Richpin, who replied with what Vianneau deems the politeness of circumstance. The volume was nonetheless favorably reviewed by the prestigious magazines Mercure de France and Gil Blas. Also in 1906, La Revue Musicale published his interview with Combariu, through which the latter aimed to verify supposed connections between literary inspiration and musical sensitivity. By 1907, he was concentrating on experiments in physics, and eventually publicized his claim to have discovered that light does not travel through vacuum. He sent a paper on astronomy subjects to be reviewed by the Société Astronomique de France, of which he subsequently became a member. The same year, he drafted the plan for a world government, announcing that he had found sympathy for the cause throughout Europe. Macedonsky also introduced himself to an Italophone public, when two of his sonnets were published by Poggia the magazine of futurist theorist Filippo Tommaso Marinetti. Between 1910 and 1912, Macedonsky was again in Paris. Seeking to withdraw himself from Romania's public life due to what he perceived as injustice, he had by then completed work on the French-language tragicomedy Le Fou, which was only published after his death. He was actively seeking to establish his reputation in French theater, reading his new play to a circle which included Louis de Gons Aigu Frick and Florian Parmentier, while, at home, newspapers reported rumors that his work was going to be staged by Sarah Bernhard's company. His efforts were largely fruitless, and, accompanied by his son Alexis, the poet left France spent some time in Italy, and eventually returned to Romania. Passing through the German Empire, he learned of Ion Luca Caragel's sudden death, and wrote Adivarl Daily an open letter, which showed that he had come to revise his stance, notably comparing the deceased author's style and legacy to those of Mark Twain. 
final transition. During Macedonsky's absence, his style and work had come to be reviewed more positively, in particular by the young authors Idragoslav, Horia Fertuna, Ion Pilat, Anastasi Mandru, Al Tistamashiad, as well as by post Junimist critic Mihail Dragomiresko, who offered Macedonsky a good reception in his Convorbari Critis magazine. Tudor Vianu, who cites contemporary statements by Dragoslav, concludes that, upon arrival, Macedonsky was enthusiastically received by a public who had missed him. Also in 1912, one of his poems was published as an homage by Symbolol, a magazine published by the young and radical symbolists Tristan Zara, Ion Venia, and Marcel Janko. Around that time, Macedonsky also collaborated with the IA, I-based moderate symbolist magazine Versary, I Praza. Polemics surrounding his case nevertheless continued, in late 1912, as part of a national theatre adaptation of Alphonse Dodet's Sappho, actor Casimir Belcott borrowed from Macedonsky's appearance and mannerisms to portray a failure. Macedonsky and his protégés had become regular frequenters of Bucharest cafés. Having a table permanently reserved for him at Imperial Hotel's Cubular Coffee House, he was later a presence in two other such establishments, High Life and Teresa Atetelli, Anu. He is said to have spent part of his time at Kubler loudly mocking the traditionalist poets who gathered at an opposite table. Meanwhile, the Poets' Literary Club, set up at his house in Derobin, I Quarter, had come to resemble a mystical circle, over which he held magisterial command. Vianu, who visited the poet together with Pilat, compares this atmosphere with those created by other mystics and magi of poetry. The hall where seances were hosted was only lit by candles, and the tables were covered in red fabric. Macedonsky himself was seated on a throne designed by Alexis, and adopted a dominant pose. The apparent secrecy and the initiation rites performed on new members were purportedly inspired by Rosicrucianism and the Freemasonry. By then, Macedonsky was rewarding his followers' poems with false gemstones. The poet founded Revista Critica, which again closed after a short while, and issued the poetry volume Flori Saker. Grouping his four, a moral of poems and older pieces, it was dedicated to his new generation of followers, whom Macedonsky's preface referred to as the New Romania. He continued to hope that El Ifu was going to be staged in France, especially after he received some encouragement in the form of articles in Mercure de France and Journal des Debats, but was confronted with the general public's indifference. In 1914, Thalassa was published in a non-definitive version by Constantin Banu S. magazine Flacara, which sought to revive overall interest in his work. At a French Red Cross conference in September, Macedonsky paid his final public homage to France, which had just become entangled in World War I. It was also in 1914 that Macedonsky commissioned for print his very first rondels and completed work on a tragedy play about Renaissance poet Dante Alieri known as La Mort de Dante in its French original, and Mortiel We Dante in the secondary Romanian version. The aging poet was by then building connections with the local art scene, together with artist Alexandru Severin. He created Senecluel Idealist, which included symbolist artists and was placed under the honorary patronage of King Carol. 1916 was also the year when Romania abandoned her neutrality and, under a national liberal government, rallied with the Entente powers. During the neutrality period, Macedonsky had shed his lifelong Francophilia to join the Germanophiles 
who wanted to see Romanian participation on the Central Powers side. In 1915, he issued the journal Cavantolmu. Entirely written by him, it published ten consecutive issues before going bankrupt, and notably lashed out against France for being bourgeois and lawyer-filled, demanding from Romania not to get involved in the conflict. Commentators and researchers of his work have declared themselves puzzled by this change in allegiance. Macedonsky further alienated public opinion during the Romanian campaign, when the Central Powers armies entered southern Romania and occupied Bucharest. Alexis was drafted and became a war artist, but Macedonsky Sr., who received formal protection from the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Bucharest, chose to stay behind while the authorities and many ordinary citizens relocated to IA, I, where resistance was still being organized. His stance was interpreted as collaborationism by his critics. However, Macedonsky reportedly faced extreme poverty throughout the occupation. Having by then begun to attend the circle of Alexandru Bogdan Pite, T.I., his promoter and fellow Germanophile, he was once rewarded by the latter with a turkey filled with gold coins. Literatural resumed print in June 1918, once Romania capitulated to the Central Powers under the Treaty of Bucharest. A controversial incident occurred soon afterwards, when, going against the counsel of his friend and collaborator Stamatiad, Macedonsky signed a literatural article where the German military administrator August von Mackensen, who was about to lead his troops out of Romania, was presented in a positive light. In a manner deemed excessive by historian Lucian Boya, the Romanian writer was paying homage not just to Mackensen, but also, indirectly, to German Emperor Wilhelm II and the Reichsheer. Soon after reading the piece, Romanian Academy member and fellow symbolist promoter Ovid Densuzianu withdrew his own nomination of Macedonsky for an Academy seat. During summer, Macedonsky also joined the group of public figures who saluted the senior conservative Germanophile Petr P. Karp, and, in September, joined Ioan Slavisai and Gala Galaction as a contributor to the occupation magazine Romanian in Word und Bild, where he prophesied an anti-French political renaissance of Romania. Alexandru Macedonsky faced problems after the Romanian government resumed its control over Bucharest, and during the early years of Greater Romania. What followed the Mackensen article, Vianua claims, was Macedonsky's bellum contra omnes. However, the poet made efforts to accommodate himself with the triumphal return of the IA, I authorities, in December 1918. Literatural celebrated the extension of Romanian rule from the Tissa to the Dniester as a success of the national liberals, paying homage to Francophile political leaders Ion I.C. Brașinu and Take Ionescu. Macedonsky also envisaged running in the 1918 election for a seat in the new parliament, but never registered his candidature. According to Vianu, he had intended to create a joke political party, the Intellectual Group, whose other member was an unnamed coffeehouse acquaintance of his. Literatural was revived for a final time in 1919. His health deteriorated from heart disease, which is described by Vianu as an effect of constant smoking. By that stage, Vianu recalls, Macedonsky also had problems coming to terms with his age. His last anthemus work was the pamphlet Zaherlina, completed in 1919 and published the following year. It notably attacked Densuzianu, who had become Macedonsky's personal enemy. Some other polemical texts he had authored late in life saw print only after his death under the title Mustrari Postum Kitra Ogenera, i.e. 
Illegator. 1920 was also the year when the People's Party cabinet attempted to pension him off from his office at the Historical Monuments Commission, but the publicized protest of Macedonsky's fellow writers in Bucharest made it reconsider. Confined to his home by illness and old age, Macedonsky was still writing poems, some of which later known as his Ultima Verba. The writer died on November 24, at three o'clock in the afternoon. Having come to develop an addiction to floral fragrances, he was inhaling a rose petal extract during his last hours. He was buried in Bucharest's Bellu. Although Alexandru Macedonsky frequently changed his style and views on literary matters, a number of constants have been traced throughout his work. Thus, a common perception is that his literature had a strongly visual aspect, the notion being condensed in Cincinnat Pavlesko's definition of Macedonsky, poet, therefore painter, painter, therefore poet. Trajan Dimitrescu too recalled that his mentor had been dreaming of becoming a visual artist, and had eventually settled for turning his son Alexis into one. This pictorial approach to writing created parallels between Macedonsky and his traditionalist contemporaries Vasila Alexandri and Barbu, Tefanska de la Vrinsa. Legacy Macedonsky's School and its Early Impact Following the tenets of Dimitri Balintinianu and Theophile Gautier, the writer repeatedly called for purity in versification, and upheld it as an essential requirement, while progressively seeking to verify the quality of his poetry through fun aesthetics. A characteristic of Macedonsky's style is his inventive use of Romanian. Initially influenced by Ion Heliad Radulscu's introduction of Italian-based words to the Romanian Lexus, Macedonsky himself later infused poetic language with a large array of neologisms from several Romance sources. Likewise, Vianu notes, Macedonsky had a tendency for comparing nature with the artificial, the result of this being a document of his values. Macedonsky's language alternated neologisms with barbarisms, many of which were coined by him personally. They include claviculat, impolariata, and eurachii. His narratives nevertheless take an interest in recording direct speech, used as a method of characterization. However, Kalinesko criticizes Macedonsky for using a language which, although grammatically correct, seems to have been learned only recently, as well as for not following other Romanian writers in creating a lasting poetic style. The writer's belief in the effects of sheer willpower, notably present in his comments on esoteric subjects, was itself a defining characteristic of his perspective on literature. In 1882, he wrote about progression in one's career, we are all poets at birth, but only those who shape themselves through study will become poets. Vianu, who notes Macedonsky's exclusivity and fanaticism, places such statements in connection with Macedonsky's personal ambition, pride, and the willingness to carry out ventured actions in stated opposition with the entire surrounding and with contempt for the foreseeable reaction. Late Recognition Almost all periods of Macedonsky's work reflect, in whole or in part, his public persona and the polemics he was involved in. George Kalinescu's emits a verdict on the relation between his lifetime notoriety and the public's actual awareness of his work. Macedonsky a poet well known for being an unknown poet. According to literary critic Matei Kalinescu, the innovative aspects of his impact on Romanian literature were not as much related to his literary ideology, as much as to his contradictory spirit and essential nonconformism. However, 
literary researcher Adrian Marino proposes that Macedonsky was one of the first modern authors to illustrate the importance of dialectic unity through his views on art, in particular by having argued that poetry needed to be driven by an idea. Having theorized once, while questioning Junimist rigor, that the logic of poetry is absurdity itself, the poet also said, Poetry is the chaos of spirit and matter, of the cries of distress and mad laughter. From the sublime to the trivial, that is what it should be. He later revised part of this verdict, and, making explicit his adoption of aestheticism, spoke against trivial subjects and in favor of the sublime. Portrayals, Visual Tributes, and Landmarks Works published anthumously Notes While Macedonsky also discarded the concept of social poetry not long after postulating it, its spirit, Tudor Vianua believes, can still be found in his later contributions. This, the critic notes, was owed to his social temperament, whose fundamental experience is that of the social. Discussing this sociable and extrovert character, other critics see in the poet's life and work the imprint of Quixoteism. Also according to Vianu, this contrasted with Macedonsky's failures in communicating with the public an experience which made him misanthropic and contributed to his ultimate vision of death as freedom. Literary historian Pompilio Constantinesco concluded, Macedonsky could not resign, his one martyrdom was for art, as the sole liberation from a tormented life. Other commentators have defined the poet's perspective on life as a result of neurosis. In Vianu's perspective, Macedonsky's stance is dominated by a mixture of nostalgia, sensuality, lugubrious grotesque imagery and the lack of bashfulness for antisocial sentiments which complements his sarcasm. In respect to the latter characteristic, Vianu notes no one in Romanian literature has laughed the same way as Macedonsky, whereas critic, Tefan Casimir argues, lacking the sense of relativity in principles, and implicitly a sense of humor. Casimir adds, only when he aged did learn to smile. George Kalinesco himself believes Macedonsky to have been fundamentally a spiritual man with lots of humor, speculating that he was able to see the uselessness of his own scientific ventures. Critics note that, while Macedonsky progressed from one stage to the other, his work fluctuated between artistic accomplishment and mediocrity. Tudor Vianua believes failure in reaching originality and reliance on soppy conventional attributes of the day to be especially evident wherever Macedonsky tried to emulate epic poetry. He also notes that Macedonsky's love-themed pieces cannot be listed among most fortunate. At his best, commentators note, he was one of the Romanian literature's classics. Macedonsky is thus perceived as the author second only to Emanescu, and as his ideal counterpart a relation Vianu describes as the internal dualism to familiar gods. Various critics have compared Emanescu's poetic discourse with that of the symbolist leader, concluding that the two poets often display very similar attitudes. Kalinescu writes that, while Macedonsky's work is largely inferior to that of his Junimist rival, it forms the best reply ever conceived within their common setting. With Ion Katina, Vasile Pon, and Grigory H. Grandia, young Macedonsky belonged to late Romanian Romanticism, part of a neo-romantic generation which had for its mentors Heliad Radulscu and Balintini Anu. Other early influences were Pierre-Jean de Beranger and Gottfried August Berger, together with Romanian folklore, motifs from them being adapted by Macedonsky into pastorals and ballads of ca. 1870-1880.
The imprint of Romanticism and such other sources was evident in Prima Verba, which groups pieces that Macedonsky authored in his early youth, the earliest of them being written when he was just twelve. Critics generally argue that the volume is without value. The poems display his rebellious attitude, self-victimization and strong reliance on autobiographical elements, centering on such episodes as the death of his father. In one piece inspired by the ideology of Heliad Radulscu, Vianu notes, Macedonsky sings the French Revolution's love for freedom and equality, otherwise proclaimed from his nobleman's perspective. It reads, Candicum paparul videm ca studiaza, sa nu avem mura cand se luminiza, ca frat, isalio beam. Now that we see the people studying, let us not be hating them while they grow enlightened, let us love them like brothers. In parallel, Macedonsky used erotic themes, completing a series which, although written on the model of idols, is noted for its brute details of sexual exploits. The poet probably acknowledged that posterity would reject them, and did not republish them in any of his collected poetry volumes. During his time at Old Toll, Macedonsky published a series of poems, most of which were not featured in definitive editions of his work. In addition to odes written in the Italian-based version of Romanian, it includes lyrics which satirize Carol I without mentioning his name. Following his arrest, Macedonsky also completed Cellula Mea de la Vacare, T.I., which shows his attempt to joke about the situation. In contrast to this series, some of the pieces written during Macedonsky's time in the Budjak and northern Dobruja display a detachment from contemporary themes. At that stage, he was especially inspired by Lord Byron, whom Vianna calls the sovereign poet of youth. In Kalil Arabului, Macedonsky explores exotic and Levantine settings, using symbols which announce George Co., Buck S. L. Zorab, and the Venetian themed Ithilo, which centers on episodes of betrayal and murder. Others were epic and patriotic in tone with subjects such as Romanian victories in the Russo-Turkish War or the Imperial Roman sites along the Danube. One of these pieces, titled Hynov after the village and stone quarry in Rasova, gives Macedonsky a claim to being the first modern European poet to have used free verse, ahead of the French symbolist Gustave Kahn. Macedonsky himself later voiced the claim, and referred to such a technique as symphonic verse, proteic verse, or, in honor of composer Richard Wagner, Wagnerian verse. While editing Old Toll, Macedonsky also completed his first prose writings. These were the travel account Pompeia, I Sorrento and a prison-themed story described by Vianu as a tearjerker, titled Canel din Vacare, T.I. These were later complemented by other travel works, which critic Mihai Zamfir likens to the verbal experiments of Impressionist literature, pioneering in the Romanian prose poetry genre. The short comedy Gemini was his debut work for the stage, but, according to Vianu, failed to show any merit other than a logical construction and a preview into Macedonsky's use of sarcasm. These writings were followed in 1876 by a concise biography of Karjali Yule, an early 19th century hatchduck. In line with his first Levant themed poems, Macedonsky authored the 1877 story A, a Scfac Bonai, a fable of fatalism and the Muslim world. It dealt with two brothers, one hard working and one indolent the latter of whom earns his money through a series of serendipitous events. Likewise, his verse comedy Yad. 
borrowed its theme from the widely circulated collection of Persian literature known as Sindapa. The setting was however modern, and, as noted by French-born critic Frédéric Dame, the plot also borrowed much from Émile Autier's Gabriel and from other morality plays of the period. Part of the text was an ironic treatment of youth in liberal professions, an attitude which Macedonsky fitted in his emerging anti-bourgeois discourse. With the first poems in his Nights Cycle, Macedonsky still showed his allegiance to Romanticism, and in particular to Alphonse de Lamartine, and the supposed inventor of this theme, Alfred de Musset. Noaptia de Noimbri opens with a violent condemnation of his adversaries, and sees Macedonsky depicting his own funeral. The poem is commended by Kalinesco, who notes that, in contrast to the apparently trivial beginning, the main part, where Macedonsky depicts himself in flight over the Danube, brings the Romanian writer close to the accomplishments of Dante Alire. The writer himself claimed that the piece evidenced the uttermost breath of inspiration I have ever felt in my life. Another poem, Noaptia de Aprili, was probably his testimony of unrequited love for Aristiza Romanesco. By the 1880s, Macedonsky developed and applied his social poetry theory, as branch of realism. Explained by the writer himself as a reaction against the legacy of Lamartine, it also signified his brief affiliation with the naturalist current, a radical segment of the realist movement. Traian Dimitrescu thus noted that Macedonsky cherished the works of French naturalists and realists such as Gustave Flaubert and Émile Zola. During this phase, Macedonsky made known his sympathy for the disinherited, from girls forced into prostitution to convicts sentenced to penal labor on salt mines, and also spoke out against the conventionalism of civil marriages. His acneal includes the verdict. Vi. Cem convenit cu tu, tu anu miso, iatate. Multiple my demna ca talhari ie de assist complete loca, statal eofic, iun, your dreptatus drambatate, care duce omeniria dintrun hop intr unfaga. Alas! What we have all agreed to deem society, is far more suited than bandits are for this terrible dwelling, state is fiction, and justice and injustice that leads humanity from a bump down into a rut. Naturalist depiction was also the main element in his prose pieces of the early 1880s. Among them was the first of several sketch stories using still life techniques, Casa Cunr 10. With Intercoat, E. Drama Bonala, and later Cometal We Odoresco, Macedonsky speaks about his own biography. The former has for a protagonist Pandal Vergia, a 35-year-old man who is consumed by an avicultural obsession, who dreams of turning into a bird, and who is eventually maimed by his overcrowded fowls. In contrast, Diranu is a Bohemian university student, possessed by dreams of military and political glory, and who meditates about his future in front of Heliad Radulscu's statue or in Bucharest cafes. Also a bohemian, Odorescu announces his discovery of a comet, before being proved wrong by his aunt, an ordinary woman. Some pieces also double as memoirs, in Drama Bonala, the plot revolves around Macedonsky's recollection of the 1866 plebiscite. Vianu draws attention to the picturesque depiction of historic Bucharest, a contributing element in Cometa, Casa Cunr 10 and Intercoat, e. With Uncia, Ul Sarasi, Macedonsky took naturalist tenets into the field of drama. Frederick Dame believed it an imitation of a play by Ernest D. Hervely and Alfred Grevin, but, Vianu argues, 
the Romanian text was only loosely based on theirs, in Macedonsky's adaptation, the theme became fairy tale like, and used a speech style based on Romanian folklore. Around the time of its completion, Macedonsky was also working on a similarly loose adaptation of William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, which notably had the two protagonists die in each other's arms. Another such play is Three Decembri, which partly retells Friedrich Ludwig Zacharias Werner Esther 24 Februar using naturalist devices. By contrast, the homage play Cusavota is mainly a romantic piece, where Alexander John Cusa finds his political mission validated by legendary figures in Romanian history. In parallel, Macedonsky was using poetry to carry out his polemics. In an 1884 epigram, he reacted against Alexandri's Fantana Blanduzi, but, in Vianu's definition, his regular causticity seems to be restrained. The piece he had earlier written, presumably against Emanesco, scandalized the public by mocking the rival's mental ruin. Un ex, Pridin's Poeticum, S.A. Dus P.E. Sel My Jalnik Drum, L.A. Plange Daka and Balamuk, Destinol Sau N.A.R. Fi My Bun, Kachi Pana Iria Fost Nasi, I knew E. A. Zadikat Nebun. An ex, who calls himself a poet has now, gone down that most pathetic road, I'd cry for him if in Bedlam, his fate were not one for the best, as up to yesterday he had been dopey, and now he is merely insane. According to Tudor Vianu, Macedonsky was mostly motivated by his disappointment in Junimia, and in particular by Emanesco's response to his public persona. Vianu contends that, although Macedonsky never was familiar with the resigned and patient attitudes, he was by no means an evil man. On one occasion, the poet defended himself against criticism, noting that the epigram had not been specifically addressed to Emanesco, but had been labelled as such by the press, and claiming to have authored it years before its literatural edition. However, the later piece via, Ada Apoi still displays resentments he harboured toward Emanesco. By 1880-1884, Particularly after the Emanesco scandal, Macedonsky envisaged prioritizing French as his language of expression. According to Vianu, Macedonsky had traversed the lowest point of his existence, and had been subject to one of the most delicate mysteries of poetic creation. Among his pieces of the period is the French language sonnet Parle, I L me dit allors, where, Vianu notes, one discovers the state of mind of a poet who decides to expatriate himself. According to Mihai Zamfir, at the end of his transition from the mimetic and egocentric verse to symbolist poetry, Macedonsky emerged a remarkable, often extraordinary author. In the early 20th century, fellow poet and critic Endovitasco described Macedonsky, Ion Minulescu and other symbolists from Wallachia as distinct from their Moldavian counterparts in both style and themes. Endorsing the theory and practice of symbolism for much of his life, Macedonsky retrospectively claimed to have been one of its first exponents. His version of symbolism, critic Paul Cernat notes, clashed with that advocated by many of his contemporaries in that it rejected merit to the decadent movement, and represented the decorative aestheticist trend of Peronician spirit within the Romanian symbolist current. Within Posia A. Iderului, Macedonsky invoked as his models to follow some important or secondary symbolist and Parnassian figures, Charles Baudelaire, José Finn Peladin, Maurice Maeterlinck, Stéphane Mallarmé, and Jean Morias. In his review of Bronzes for Mercure de France, 
Pierre Quillard remarked the irreproachable technique, but criticized the poet for being too indebted to both Baudelaire and Le Conte de Lisle, other symbolist figures whom Macedonsky is known to have borrowed from are José María de Heredia and Ewan Gilkin. While undergoing this transition, to what linguist Manuel Adelia Sousa you argues is a mostly Parnassian phase, Macedonsky was still referencing naturalism, and considered it compatible with symbolism. With the adoption of such tenets came a succession of symbolist poems, where the focus is on minutely observed objects, usually items of luxury, partly reflecting themes he had explored in the naturalist stage. Commenting on them, Tudor Vianu argues that no such works had ever been produced in Romanian literature up until that moment. In his Aspa, Aula We Pentor, the poet reflected on civilization itself, as reflected in inanimate opulence. The motif was also developed in descriptive prose fragments later grouped in Cardia de Or, collectively titled Nouvelle Fara Omni and compared by Kalinescu with the paintings of Theodore Amon. Also during that stage, Macedonsky was exploring the numerous links between symbolism, mysticism, and esotericism. Earlier pieces had already come to explore macabre themes characteristic for an early branch of symbolism. Influenced by Maurice Roland at, they include the somber Vaporal Moor, Two and Visol Fatal. Likewise, the piece titled Im Null We Satan was placed by critics in connection with Le Litanies de Satan, but, Vianu argues, the source of Macedonsky's satanic themes may have been lodged in his own vision of the world. This interest also reflected in his 1893 Sol, where Cincinnat Pavlescu's contribution is supposedly minimal. Echoing satanic themes Ernest Lagouvet's dramatic version of the media myth and the classical work of Jean Racine, it shows the dark powers of political conflict intervening between the eponymous king and his ephebos like protege David, the latter of whom turns out to be the agent of spiritual revolution. Noaptia de August, outlines a monistic belief probably inspired by Rosicrucianism, stressing the unity between soul and matter and depicting Macedonsky's own journey into a transcendental space. Following the examples of Baudelaire's Les Paradis Artificiels, but also echoing his readings from Paul Verlaine and Théophile Gautier, Macedonsky left poems dealing with narcotics and substance abuse, at least some of which reflected his personal experience with nicotine and possibly other unnamed drugs. Also at that stage, Macedonsky also began publishing the instrumentalist series of his symbolist poems. This form of experimental poem was influenced by the theories of René Gill and verified through his encounter with Rémy de Gourmet's views. In parallel, it reaffirmed Macedonsky's personal view that music and the spoken word were intimately related. Romanian critic Petr Raelianu theorized that such elements evidenced Macedonsky's transition to meta-literature. On a different level, they echoed an older influence, that of Gottfried August Berger. Despite having stated his interest in innovation, Macedonsky generally displayed a more conventional style in his Excelsior volume. It included Noaptia de Mai which Vianu sees as one of the most beautiful poems and as evidence of a clear joy, without any torment whatsoever. A celebration of spring partly evoking folkloric themes, it was made famous by the recurring refrain, Vani, I, Privigito Aria Canta, I Lilacal E N Floret. Like Noaptia de Mai, Lucky, depicts intense joy completed in this case by what Vianua calls the restorative touch of nature. The series also returned to Levant settings and Islamic imagery, particularly in A.C. M. Duveler. 
Also noted within the volume is his short modern psalm series, including the piece Erder, which is addressed to God. Erder. Sun ca oris om, mm indoit de a ta putera, mris dis fintal mistera, ce sunt in ficaratum, Erder. Sun ca oris om. Forgiveness. I'm like any man. I have been doubting your power, I derided the sacred mysteries, that lie within each of the atoms, forgiveness. I'm like any man. Excelsior also included Noaptia de Ianuri, which encapsulates one of his best-known political statements. Angelesco reads it as a meditation on disillusionment that culminates in a vitality-laden exhortation of action. Its anti-bourgeois attitude, literary historian Z. Ornia argues, was one of the meeting points between Macedonsky and Junimism. In what is seen as its most acid section, the text notably reads, M. M. Nascut in N. I. T. E. Zile can tampata burgazimi, din tegia fasan tribuna, legi undicio, carry. Pun o tal pon arroyo aza pe popper, i boy rhyme, zile canned s impart, era in calat, i in victime, i can sti go liberta, tu e pertat de carsi ameri. I was born into days when the moronic bourgeoisie, turning counters into rostrums, a legion of knaves, places a muddy soul on the people and the boyars days when the country is divided into hangmen and victims, and when the flag of liberty is carried by publicans. At the same time as being engaged in his most violent polemics, Macedonsky produced meditative and serene poems, which were later judged to be among his best. Noaptia de Decembri is the synthesis of his main themes and influences, rated by commentators as his masterpiece. Partly based on an earlier poem, it tells the story of an emir, who, left unsatisfied by the shallow and opulent life he leads in Baghdad, decides to leave on pilgrimage. While critics agree that it is to be read as an allegory of Macedonsky's biography, the ironic text does not make it clear whether the emir actually reaches his target nor if the central metaphor of Mecca as a mirage means that the goal is not worth sacrificing for. While Mircea Angelesco comments that Macedonsky illustrates unusual tension by rigorously amplifying references to the color red, seen as a symbol of suffering, Kalinescu notes that the sequence of lyrics has a studied delirious element, and illustrates this with the quote. I l e a myral, I toate l e r, e tana, e farmac, e trasnet, e zu, d a r zilnic s e sem furat de o visere, spre mecca s e duce c u gandal miru, i n fa, adoran, e i c e s de despair, your l e a myral, I toate l e r. And he is the emir, and he owns each thing. He's young, he's a charm, he's a bolt, he's a god, but in each day he feels he is swept by a dream, towards Mecca his though races constantly, and faced with the wish, all things disappear, and he is the emir, and he owns each thing. In prose, his focus shifted back to the purely descriptive, or led Alexandru Macedonsky into the realm of fantasy literature. These stories, most of which were eventually collected in Cardia de Or, include memoirs of his childhood in the Amaradia region, nostalgic portrayals of the old Tinian Boyar environment, idealized depictions of Cusa's reign, as well as a retrospective view on the end of Rom slavery. The best known among them is P. E. Drum de Po, T. A., a third person narrative and thinly disguised memoir where the characters are an adolescent Alexandru Macedonsky and his father, General Macedonsky.
The idyllic outlook present in such stories is one of the common meeting points between his version of symbolism and traditionalist authors such as Barbu, Tefansko de la Vrinsa. Vianu indicates the connection, but adds, Macedonsky descended, through memory, in the world of the village, with the tremor of regret for the peace and plenty of the old settlements, so well polished that each person, landowner as well as peasant, lived within a framework that nature itself seemed to have granted. In depicting rural environments, Macedonsky presents the point of view of a conservative. Thalassa, L.E. Calvair de Fou, a fantasy novel and extended prose poem, was celebrated by Macedonsky's disciple Oris Georgisko as the new religion of humanity. The volume carried the mocking dedication to France, this Chaldea. It has affinities with writings by the Italian decadent author Gabriel D'Annunzio, as well as echoes from Anatole France. The hero Thalassa, a Greek boy, works as a lighthouse keeper on Snake Island, fantasizing about the golden age of mankind. His fate is changed by a shipwreck, during which a girl, Calliope, reaches the island's shore. Thalassa and Calliope fall in love, but are mysteriously unable to seal their union through sexual intercourse, the boy attributes this failure to the curse of human individuality. Seeking to achieve a perfect union with his lover, he eventually kills her and drowns himself in the Black Sea. In her review for Mercure de France, novelist Ricalda argued, very difficult to read, entirely developed in symbolist manner almost impossible to recount, obviously written in French but nevertheless obviously conceived by a Romanian. Ricalda believed the work to display the fragrance of oriental spices rose marmalade and a slice of bear meat. According to Vianu, the book builds on Macedonsky's earlier themes, replacing naturalist observation with a metaphysical speculation about idealism. One other aspect of Macedonsky's stylistic exploration took him to attempt recording synesthesia. His manuscript is written in ink of several colors, which, he believed, was to help readers get a full sense of its meaning. Like other synesthetic aspects of his novel, this is believed to have been inspired by the techniques of Baudelaire and Arthur Rimbaud. Thalassa, L.E. Calvair de Fou is noted for its numerous cultural references, and especially for using a wide range of metaphors. Such aspects have been reviewed negatively by modern critics. Tudor Vianu writes, The poet makes such waste of gemstones that we feel like saying some of them must be false, while Kalinesco, who notes that some fragments reveal an incomparable artist and a professional metaphorist, notes that in the end, such virtuosities become a bore. According to Manuela Delia Susayu, Thalassa is prolix and too polished, traits believed by Zamfir to be less irritating in the Romanian version. Critic Cornel Moru found that, in the background, Thalassa, a great symbolist novel, confronts ancient Greek and Christian mythology, but abuses the religious vocabulary. Another part of the novel's imagery is erotic and includes an elaborate and aestheticized description of male genitalia. The four-act tragicomedy Le Fu is seen by Vianu as comparable in subject matter and depth to Enrico IV, a celebrated 1922 play by Luigi Pirandello. The plot reflects Macedonsky's confrontation with his critics, and his acceptance of the fact that people saw in him an eccentric. The central figure is a banker, Dorval, who identifies himself with Napoleon Bonaparte to the point where he sees episodes in his biography as mirrors of early 19th century battles. Unlike patients with dissociative identity disorder, 
Dorval does not actually imagine his life has become Napoleon's, but rather joins with him on an intellectual level. Witnesses of this disorder are divided into family, who seek to have Dorval committed, and close friends, who come to see his take on life as a manifestation of genius. The spectator is led to believe that the latter interpretation is the correct one. At a larger level, Vianu indicates, the play is also Macedonsky's critique of capitalism, and, using Parisian argot, makes elusive references to famous people of the day. Particularly during the 1890s, Macedonsky was a follower of Edgar Allan Poe and of Gothic fiction in general, producing a Romanian version of Poe's Metzen Gerstein story, urging his own disciples to translate other such pieces, and adopting Gothic themes in his original prose. Indebted to Jules Verne and H. G. Wells, Macedonsky also wrote a number of science fiction stories, including the 1913 Oceania Pacific Dreadnought, which depicts civilization on the verge of a crisis. The gigantic commercial ship is maintained by a banker's union, and designed to grant travelers access to every pleasure imaginable, this causes the working class inhabited cities on the continent to fall into a state of neglect and permanent violence, the climax of the story occurring with the banker's decision to destroy their creation. Oceania Pacific Dreadnought is noted for anticipating television, the ship being equipped with electrically operated large and clear mirrors that display images from various parts of the Earth. Macedonsky was by then interested in the development of cinema, and authored a silent film screenplay based on comment on Davient Rish E. T. Puissant. Late in his life, Macedonsky had come to reject symbolist tenets, defining them as imbecilities designed for the uncultured. Ultima Verba, the very last poems to be written by him, show him coming to terms with himself, and are treasured for their serene or intensely joyous vision of life and human accomplishment. The rondels written at this stage, known collectively as Poma Ronda Luralur, are one of the first instances where the technique is used locally. Like those written previously by Literatoral S. Pavlescu and Alexandru Abidnaru, they are based on an earlier motif present in Macedonsky's work, that of recurring refrains. Many of the pieces document the poet's final discoveries. One of them is Rondelil Kriniler, which proclaims fragrances as the source of beatitude, in Kriniib, Iacea Rara in Lilies one finds that exceptional drunkenness. According to, Tefan Casimir, Rondel Elora, Aului Mike shows a likable wave of irony and self-irony, and the poet himself coming to terms with the existence of a world who ignores him. Proof of his combativeness was still to be found in Rondel El Contemporaneler. The poet's take on life is also outlined in his final play, Mortiel We Dante. Kalinescu writes that, by then, Macedonsky was obsessed with the divine comedy. Macedonsky identifies with his hero, Dante Alieri, and formulates his own poetic testament while identifying World War I Romania with the medieval Republic of Florence. Tudor Vianu remarks, in Dante's great self-pride, Macedonsky found his own. He sees the play as the best such work to have been produced by Macedonsky, whereas Kalinesco deems it puerile. Zamfir believes Mortia, to be a significant text in Macedonsky's bibliography, one of the first samples of Romanian symbolist theatre, and as such indebted mainly to Maeterlinck. Vianu argues that the play may document the Romanian writer's late rejection of France, through the protagonist's statement, the French are a gentle people, but their soul is different from mine. A number of rondels show Macedonsky's late fascination with the Far East, China, and Japan. 
George Kalinescu believes that this is to be understood as one item in a large antithesis, the other being decadent Paris, which one Rondel describes as hell. The Orient, viewed as the space of serenity, is believed by Macedonsky to be peopled by toy-like women and absent opium smokers, and to be kept orderly by a stable meritocracy. The Chinese-themed poem Tsing Li Tsi, which Casimir notes for its discreet, almost imperceptible, humor, reads. Tsing Li Tsi Stan Prispada or, Cu Okimasi Ca de Girlan, Sub de Argent Frunzos Tijor, Casa e de Por, Ella. Tsing Li Tsi sits on the golden porch with his eyes as small as those of mice, under the silvery, leafy, treasure, his house is porcelain-like. Alexandru Macedonsky repeatedly expressed the thought that, unlike his contemporaries, posterity would judge him a great poet. With the exception of Mihail Dragomirescu, conservative literary critics tended to ignore Macedonsky while he was alive. The first such figure was Junimia S. Tichu Moresco, who believed him to be a minor author, referring to him only a couple of times in his books and usually ridiculing him in his articles. One of these texts, the 1886 essay Po, I, I criticize, spoke of Macedonsky as having vitiated poetry, a notion he also applied to Constantin D. Arisescu and Aaron Densu, Ianu. Especially radical pronouncements were left by the traditionalist authors Ilari Chindi and Nikolai I. Orga. Chindi wrote of Macedonsky being the caricature of a man, having a feverish mind and being motivated by the brutal instinct of revenge. I. Orga, who became better known as a historian, later retracted some of the statements he had made against the poet during the 1890s. Among the younger prominent traditionalist writers was the Transylvanian-born Lucian Blaga, who may have purposefully avoided Macedonsky during his first visit to Bucharest in 1920. Although more sympathetic to the symbolist author, both Dragomirescu and George Adamescu tended to describe him as exclusively the product of French and decadent literature, while Dragomirescu's disciple Ion Trival denied all merit to Macedonsky's literature. According to Tudor Vianu, Macedonsky's intellectual friends were largely responsible for passing down a better and truer image of the abused poet. It was also due to Dragomirescu that Noaptia de Decemvri was included in a literature textbook for final grade high school students, which some argue is the poet's first ever presence in the Romanian curriculum. According to historian Lucian Nastasa, the poet's wife Anna Rallet behaved like an excellent secretary while Macedonsky was still alive and thereafter helped sort and edit his manuscript while maintaining an actual cult for her husband. Macedonsky's cosmopolitan circle was the center of a literary alternative to the prevailing conservatism and Emanesco-like traditionalism of the day, the latter tendency being grouped around Salmonatorial magazine for part of Macedonsky's lifetime. While Macedonsky himself maintained his links with Romanticism and Classicism, commentators have retrospectively recognized in him the main person who announced Romania's first wave in modernist literature. Many first-generation disciples were to part with his guidelines early on, either by radicalizing their symbolism or by stepping out of its confines. Traian Dimitrescu was one of the first to do so. Focusing on his commitment to socialism Vianu notes that the split took place without coldness and the heart's versatility on Macedonsky's part. Literary researcher Lydia Boat argues that it was Patika who first illustrated mature symbolism, emancipating himself from Macedonsky's eclectic tendencies after 1902. By that time, 
the symbolist authors Dimitri Angel and N.D. Kosha used Macedonsky's fantasy prose as an inspiration for their own, and N. Dvidesko was borrowing from his mystical discourse. The pictorial and joyous elements in Macedonsky's poems were also serving to inspire Stamatiad, Eugeniu, Tefansko Est and Horia Fortuna. In the early stages of his career, Ion Pilat wrote pieces which echo his master's choice of exotic themes. A more discreet legacy of Macedonsky's ideas was also preserved inside the conservative and traditionalist camps. Although his separation from literatural was drastic, and led him to rally with Junimia, Dulia Zamfires could build on some elements borrowed from the magazine's ideology, incorporating them into his literary vision. Many of Macedonsky's most devoted disciples, whom he himself had encouraged, have been rated by various critics as secondary or mediocre. This is the case of Theodore Cornell, Mircea Dimitriad, Orest Georgescu, Alexandru Abidnaru, Stoenescu, Stamatiad, Carol Scrob, Dumitru Karnabat, and Donner Muntenu. Another such minor author was the self-styled hermeticist Alexandru Petrov, who expanded on Macedonsky's ideas about esoteric knowledge. Macedonsky's eldest son Alexis continued to pursue a career as a painter. His son Sor followed in his footsteps, receiving acclaim from art critics of the period. Sor's short career ended in 1928 before he turned 19, but his works have been featured in several retrospective exhibitions, including one organized by Alexis. Alexis later experimented with scenic design as an assistant to French filmmaker René Clare, his later life, shrouded in mystery and intrigue, led him to a career in fascist Italy and Francoist Spain. Another of Alexandru Macedonsky's sons, Nikita, was also a poet and painter. For a while in the 1920s, he edited the literary supplement of Universal Newspaper. Two years after her father's death, Anna Macedonsky married poet Mihail Selarianu. In addition to his polemical portrayals in works by Alexandri, Emanesco, and Karajal, Macedonsky's career was an inspiration for various authors. His image acquired mythical proportions for his followers. Like Dimitrescu, many of them left memoirs on Macedonsky which were published before or after his death. His admirers were writing poetry about him as early as 1874, and, in 1892, Cincinnati Pavlesko published a rhapsodizing portrait of Macedonsky as the artist. Pavlesko, Dragoslav, and Patika paid homage to the writer by leaving recollections which describe him as a devoted and considerate friend. In contrast, traditionalist poet Alexandru Vilahu, a authored an 1889 sketch story in which Macedonsky is the object of derision. Actual recognition of the poet as a classic came only in the interwar period. A final volume of never-before-published poems, Pomaranda Luralar, saw print in 1927. Macedonsky's work was analyzed and popularized by a new generation of critics, among them Vianu and George Kalinescu. The post-Junimist modernist critic Eugen Lovinescu also commented favorably on Macedonsky's work, but overall, Kalinescu asserts, his opinions on the subject gave little insight into what he actually thought about the poet. He also recounts that Macedonsky himself treated Lovinescu with disdain, and once called him a canary. The emerging avant-garde although originating from symbolism, progressively took its distance from literatural's legacy. Initially, Macedonsky's contribution to experimental literature was continued with informal symbolism by his disciples Dimitriad, 
Iulius Caesar saves Ku and Ion Minulescu. The latter was particularly indebted to Macedonsky in matters of vision and language. In 1904, Tudor Argazi also left behind the literatural circle and its tenets, eventually arriving to the fusion of modernist, traditionalist, and avant-garde elements. However, he remained indebted to Macedonsky's example in his descriptive prose. The 1912 Symbolo magazine, which moved between conventional symbolism and the emerging avant-garde, also published an imagist-inspired parody of Noaptia de Mai, signed by Adrian Moniu. A co-founder of Dadaism during the late 1910s, Tristan Zara is believed by Swedish researcher Tom Sandqvist to have been inspired more or less directly by Macedonsky, and in particular by the latter's thoughts on the relation between absurdity and poetry. In his debut poems, Benjamin Fondane Barbufundo Anu occasionally followed Macedonsky, but, by 1920, stated that the symbolist Doyen merely imitated French models to the point of parasitism. Several avant-garde authors returned to Macedonsky's literary guidelines by the late 1920s, as they themselves grew more moderate. This was the case of Maniu and Ion Venia, both of whom published prose works in the line of Thalassa. The same work is also believed to have influenced two non-avant-garde authors, Davidescu and Mediaio Karajal, who remained close to the tenets' symbolism. Mediaio was the illegitimate son of Ion Luca Karajal, but, Vianu notes, could withstand comparisons with his father's rival, the eccentricities were complementary, although Mediaio Karajal shied away from public affairs. In the same post-symbolist generation, Celerianu, George Bacavia, and Pastorel Tidarianu also built on Macedonsky's legacy, being later joined in this by the Bessarabian linguist Eugenio Cio, Iriu. In the late 1920s, when their form of modern psalms inspired Albanian-Romanian poet Alexander Stavridrinova, Macedonsky and Argazi both made an indirect impact on Albanian literature. Macedonsky's status as one of Romanian literature's greats was consolidated later in the 20th century. By this time, Noaptia de December had become one of the most recognizable literary works to be taught in Romanian schools. During the first years of communist Romania, the socialist realist current condemned symbolism, but spoke favorably of Macedonsky's critique of the bourgeoisie. A while after this episode, Marin Sorescu, one of the best known modernist poets of his generation, wrote a homage parody of the night's cycle. Included in the volume Singur Interpo, I, it is seen by critic Mircea Scarlet as Sorescu's most representative such pieces. Also then, Noaptia de Decembre partly inspired, Tefan Augustin Duena, Ballad Mr. Ulcucol, Ida Argent. In the 1990s, Tefan Agapian took the night's cycle as inspiration for an erotic short story, while Pavel, U, Era adapted his rondels to a modernized setting. Macedonsky's prose also influenced younger writers such as Angelo Michivici and Anka Maria Mosera. In neighboring Moldova, Macedonsky influenced the neo-symbolism of Oralia Busuiak. A magazine by the name of Literatural, which claims to represent the legacy of Macedonsky's publication, was founded in Romania in 1991, being edited by writers Sorisco, Fanu, Nigu and Mircea Micu. In 2006, the Romanian Academy granted posthumous membership to Alexandru Macedonsky. Macedonsky's poems had a sizable impact on Romania's popular culture. During communism, 
Noaptia de Maya was the basis for a successful musical adaptation, composed by Marian Nister and sung by Mirabella Dower. Tudor George, a singer-songwriter inspired by American folk revival, also used some of Macedonsky's texts as lyrics to his melodies. In the 20 hundreds, the refrain of Noaptia de Maya was mixed into a mania parody by Adrian Kopi Lul My Nun. Although his poetic theories were largely without echoes in Romanian art, Macedonsky captured the interest of several modern artists, including, early on, cartoonist Nicolae Petrescu Gaina. Alongside other writers who visited Teresa Ateteli, Anu, Macedonsky was notably portrayed the drawings of celebrated Romanian artist Iasif Iser. He is also depicted in a 1918 lithograph by Jean Alexandru Stiati, purportedly Stiati's only symbolist work. Thalassa, L.E. Colver de Fou inspired a series of reliefs, designed by Alexis Macedonsky and hosted in his father's house in Derobin, I. During the 1910s, busts of him were completed by two sculptors, Alexandru Severin and Friedrich Stork, one of Stork's variants being hosted by the Johan Cantacuzino collection. In 1919, Theodore Burka was also inspired to complete another bust, and, during World War II, was commissioned by Mayor of Bucharest Ionra. Canu to build a Macedonsky monument in the Gradina Icoania Park, but this was never completed. Constantin Piliu, a, a painter active in the second half of the 20th century, made Macedonsky the subject of a portrait in series dedicated to Romanian cultural figures. In 1975, a bust of Macedonsky, the work of Constantin Fomit, was unveiled in Krajava. Of Macedonsky's numerous residences, the one in Dorobin, I was demolished when the Academy of Economic Studies was expanded. A commemorative plaque was later put up near the spot. Macedonsky's childhood home in Goy, T.I. passed into state property under communism, and was in turn a school, a community home and a Macedonsky museum before falling into neglect after the Romanian Revolution of 1989. Several streets named in honor of Alexandru Macedonsky, notably in Bucharest, Craiova, Cluj-Napoca, and Timi, Ora.